one is Louise with Louise McKay Art. And after my last set of coasters I just did, I have decided I'm going to make a tray with that color palette in a S-shaped bloom blowout going this time for a little bit of negative space as the last several pours have been pretty much saturating the, the base. And one of the viewers mentioned consider going with some ne negative space and I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see how it goes. So with this video, hopefully it's on the heels of a video that I should have aired by now on how I mix my paint. What I have here, and I should have shown uh, some of these colors in my mixing video. I've got my Chantilly Lace and Golden Pearl here, Iridescent Pearl. I've got my Quinacridone Nicolazzo Gold, Gold Golden. I've got my Prussian Blue by Arteza. Golden's Iridescent Bronze and then 24 Karat and uh, Golden's Iridescent Gold. So ball, all these are with the two to three second trace. Before all that, I have my base pillow, which is the Multi-Pro. And I just opened up this container last night and decanted it. So it's really at a good consistency at about a four second trace off the stick. And then here I've got my American Floetrol black and white, titanium white, oxide black. And then in the video, I uh, was showing um, how I mix this white up. So hopefully you've seen how I mix everything and what you're gonna see here is what you saw me mix. So hopefully, cross my fingers, everything turns out okay. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna use my Berta again with the uh, condenser at the end to give it a little more direction. And also I've primed the canvas again, which this worked out really well last time, I thought. I've taped my edges on the inside, giving a little more forgiveness a little bit higher this time than the last uh, one of the last pours where I was really nervous about pulling a piece of tape off and fortunately it came out okay but I don't want to go through that again so once I have the colors down and the paint dries I'm going to be resining over the top of it so it's going to come over the top of the paint level anyway hopefully and what else do I want to cover um I think that's it so let me uh, get you down here I'm going to start pouring Start laying the colors down and we'll blow it out like in a Dutch type pour and uh, play around and see what we get. Okay, I'll be back in a second. All right, everyone, I'm going to double time in this section and I'm going to try to keep as much as I can of how I pour this and spread it just so you can see what I'm doing. But if it gets too long, I'm going to cut some parts out. So one thing I want to share here while I'm pouring down the pillow or the base is that one of the major constraints working in a tray is that you're literally working in a box. There is nowhere to go with the extra paint. You can't pour it off. So you have to approach this with the idea of starting with less and you can always add more. Always with the idea that you want to get the paint to the edges and that's it. You don't want to have so much paint that it won't dry, but you got to have enough paint down so that you have a place for the um, composition to flow. So I just want to throw that in here.
right here, I'm checking the depth of the paint, which it might be a sixteenth of an inch, no more than an eighth. Okay, we're gonna start with the Chantilly lace after I pop a couple bubbles here. Okay, so how do I wanna go? I'm gonna start with my stick and then I'm gonna start pouring off. So I'm gonna go boom. So I'm gonna go back on double time while I'm laying down the colors. You can see what I'm doing. You know what the colors are and they will be in the description um, if you click on the title. But one of the things I also wanna add here is after my first tray that I did where I tried to do a normal bloom with my blowing out with my lungs um, and I realized on a spinner it's not working out very well because it spun out into a, instead of into a bloom, it turned into a dragonfly which, you know, is fine. It looks great, but it's not what I was going for. And it, by the nature of the tray, it's a rectangle. It's not going to spin off in a nice round pattern. So going to this S pattern has really been very beneficial. I didn't want to go to multiple blooms because I didn't want to have a gap in the middle. I wanted there to be a continuous flow. So this S shape has worked really great because you get that. You get a continuous flow of the composition. And um, in my opinion, it works really well. So I'll probably try a couple different things. I know I did the X pattern before. I think it worked out too much. I got too much paint down. So yeah, the S pattern is working good and we'll keep using it for now. I will also acknowledge here that Karen Dershwin at Waterfall Acrylics has been doing the S pattern the last few weeks as well. And I think we kind of both stumbled along this pattern at the same time because I needed to go to something different because of my first experience with the tray in the dragonfly I created about a month ago. And that was the first time I saw her do it. So I think we just stumbled on it together. I want to give her credit, though, because she is the mastermind of the deconstructed bloom. But uh, I also found on my own that this worked out great for the trays. And the trays is a very different animal than what she's doing on the deconstructed bloom even though the concepts are similar. I was all ready to go with a hairdryer, but I forgot something important. I forgot the cell activator. So I'm going back now and putting down the white and then the black cell activator. So I want to point out here that doing this S hairpin turn is the most difficult part of the blowout where you're trying to blow two opposing sides into each other and you want to keep the shape of each side. So that is the trickiest part I'm finding in this particular pattern and trying to blow it out and make it look compositionally good. And I'm not sure what the difference was on this one, but this one blew out like a champ. I really had an easy time maneuvering the paint where I wanted it to go. Maybe it was because I just decanted that pillow paint. I don't know, but it really spread nicely. Okay, I'm going to stop with that on the final, the fine, go with the fine tuning here 
in a second. I need to get the paint to the edges, so let's get started with that. I'm not sure it's gonna get there. Palette knife, palette knife. So I'm gonna double time through this as I'm uh, doing the fine tuning of the paint pushing to the edges here. So I went through here, I'm gonna go through uh, double time and pick up the pace. And that mistake that I just made before, blowing it out with a straw took care of it right away. It just folded the paint right over the top of the line and it disappeared. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going at double time. I'm just pointing out that I wanna spread out the paint uh, composition just a little bit to the sides, but I am really happy with the way this blew out. So hardly any touches at all the minor most minor of touches i'm going to be putting through here so just let it run i'll turn on the music and i'll see you at the end all right Just little bits. Well, I think that's about done. But I want you to see how tacky this is, right? So if you pull up too fast, you're gonna, you know, 
we'll leave a spring back somewhere. And that's probably what happened at the beginning of the video that I had to blow out. This is where she is. I am really happy with this. Wow. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Until next time, take care.